Dragon of Ice Spire Peak Shrine of Sarvaris Shrine of Sarvaris is balanced for characters of 1st to 6th level. This location is not connected to any quest, though one of the entries in the Vandalin's Tale table might lure adventurers here. Characters might also visit the shrine after hearing of it from the were-rats in the Mountain's Toe Gold Mine. Location Overview Five miles south of Conaberry is a shrine dedicated to Sarvaris, god of divination and fate. Many years ago, the shrine's priest seer foresaw a barbarian attack on Conaberry, giving the townsfolk time to escape. Not all the townsfolk chose to flee, but those who did went to the shrine and brought back much of the town's gold with them. The barbarians eventually tracked the townsfolk to the shrine, besieged it, and slaughtered everyone inside. In the days leading up to this final battle, the priest seer helped the townsfolk hide their gold in plain sight. They melted down the coins and recast them into a bell, which they painted and hung in the shrine's belfry, replacing the old iron bell. The gold bell hangs there to this day. Over the years, many other characters have occupied the shrine. Most recently, a gang of were-rats laid here until they were driven out by orcs displaced by Cryovane the White Dragon. Recently, ogres wandered by the shrine, saw the orcs and decided to join them. Arrival An old dirt trail stretches from the outskirts of Conaberry to the shrine, which characters first see from a distance. Read aloud the following. A ruin stands in the middle of a vast field north of the rocky foothills of the Sword Mountains. An old stone temple with a belfry jutting from its peaked roof is enclosed by stone walls, many sections of which have collapsed. The trail ends at a crumbling gatehouse, the doors of which were sundered long ago. Three of the four towers that once stood at the corners of the outer walls have collapsed. Only the northeast tower remains, and a guard stands atop it. The guard spotted atop the northeast tower, Area S6, is an orc. During the day, the characters can't approach the shrine without being seen by the sentry, as there are no places to hide in the level field surrounding the shrine. If the characters wait until nightfall, clouds obscure the moon and enable them to approach unseen, as long as they stay outside the 60-foot range of the orc's dark vision. If the orc spots the characters, it cries out, rousing the shrine's other occupants. Once roused, all those occupants attack. The enemy roster table adjusts the number of orcs and ogres in the shrine based on the level of the characters and the number of characters in the party, not counting sidekicks. Enemy rosters. If the characters are first level, there are two orcs per character plus one ogre in the courtyard in area S2, one orc atop the northeast tower in area S6. If the character is the second or third level, there are three orcs per character plus two ogres in the courtyard in area S2 and one orc atop the northeast tower in area S6. If the character is a fourth to fifth level, there are four orcs per character plus three ogres in the courtyard in area S2 with one orc atop the northeast tower in area S6. And at sixth level, there are four orcs per character plus four ogres in the courtyard in area S2, one orc atop the northeast tower in area S6. When rolling initiative for these foes, roll once for all the orcs and once for all the ogres. Shrine Locations The following locations are key to the map of Shrine of Sarvaris. Squares filled in with rubble are difficult to rain as described in the rulebook. Area S1 Gatehouse The gatehouse is 20 feet high, and its outer doors have been smashed to flinders. A rusty iron portcullis blocks the south exit, but is bypassed by a rubble-filled hole in the southwest corner of the gatehouse. The winch to raise the portcullis has been destroyed, but the portcullis can be lifted manually with a successful DC-25 strength athletics check if desired. Area S2 Courtyard. The orcs and ogres camp in this grassy courtyard, 
which is littered with bones, broken weapons, and shattered armor from past battles. The courtyard has four quadrants. The ogres claim the southeast quadrant, while the orcs claim the remaining quadrants. See the enemy roster's table for more information on the orcs and ogres. The courtyard's northwest and northeast quadrants contain rotted wooden trowels and posts that were once used to feed, water, and tether horses. Area S3 Northwest Tower This tower is open to the sky and strewn with rubble. Area S4 Southwest Tower This roofless tower has a rubble-filled break in its southeast wall. Area S5 Southeast Tower Little remains of this tower, lying amid the debris, is a rusty iron bell that weighs 500 pounds. Area S6 Northeast Tower This tower is the only one of the shrine's four towers that has not fallen. An iron ladder inside the tower climbs to a stone trap door in the ceiling, through which characters can reach the tower's battlement rooftop. An orc watches the surrounding countryside from atop the tower. Area S7 Main Hall and Belfry Rows of crumbling pillars support the 40-foot high vaulted ceiling of this hall. Humanoid bones litter the dusty floor, and a 10-foot square hole in the ceiling leads up to the belfry. No rope hangs from the bell, which appears to be made of untarnished copper. The belfry can be reached from the outside by climbing the outer walls and rooftop, which requires a successful DC-15 strength athletics check. Characters can reach the belfry from inside using magic such as spider climb or fly. Treasure Close examination of the bell reveals that its thin sides are solid gold covered by a peeling copper paint. The bell, which is 3 feet wide and weighs 50 pounds, hangs from an iron fixture bolted to a wooden crossbeam. A character with carpenter's tools or smith's tools can use them to detach the bell from the beam in one minute. Any creature under the bell when it falls must succeed on a DC-12 dexterity check to get out of the way or take 14 or 4d6 bludgeoning damage. The gold bell is worth 2,500 gold pieces. Area S8 Visitor's Sanctuary Guests of the shrine were housed here. Later, the were-rats used this area as a lair. The room contains six beds with moldy mattresses, the shattered remains of a wooden table and six chairs, and a soot-stained fireplace containing a rusty cauldron hanging from a spit. A narrow break in the north wall provides an alternative exit. Area S9 Priest Seer's Sanctuary The Priest Seer of Savra slept and cooked their meals here. All the furnishings in this area have been destroyed and part of the south wall has collapsed. Area S10 Altar of Fate Six stone pillars brace the vaulted ceiling of this temple, the floor of which is buried under a thick layer of dust. Also covered in dust are four humanoid skeletons in tattered priestly vestments, lying near a stone altar situated in an alcove under four narrow windows. Carved into the front of the altar is a humanoid eye. A detect magic spell reveals an aura of divination magic around the altar. If Cryovane has been slain, nothing happens when the characters touch the altar. Otherwise, any characters touching the altar experience a vision lasting one minute, during which time the character is incapacitated. In the vision, the character floats through the roof of the shrine, soars towards Ice Spire Hold and sees the white dragon asleep on the fortress's rooftop. The divination power of the altar is effectively telling the characters where they must go to defeat the dragon. A character receives this vision only once. Nothing happens to a character who touches the altar a second time. Treasure Any character who searches the altar and succeeds on a DC-10 wisdom perception check realizes that the altar's base doesn't quite touch the floor. The altar has stone rollers built into it and can be pushed three feet to the south, revealing an unlocked wooden coffer tucked inside a one-foot square cavity in the floor. This coffer contains 57 gold pieces and a mystery key. 
If the characters acquire and identify the mystery key, give the players the mystery key card or they can reference it in the magic items listing.